Hello and welcome to the fourth video in this series of videos on programming a chess engine in C. So the last video we started adding some definitions to our defs.h file, basically for the pieces, ranks, colours, squares, etc. And now we're going to start looking at our definition for our main board structure, which I'm going to start down here. So I'm going to start this with a type definition that is a structure. Open and close the whoops, hello Mac keyboard, the curly braces, and we'll call this S underscore board. So board structure, I usually like to underscore the structures with an S. And now let's think about what we have. Well the first thing I'd like to do is have an array of integers. We'll call this array pieces because it's basically what's on our board, and we'll make it of a size defined by this constant here board square num. So we've declared an array of 120 integers which corresponds with what we have here in our total board representation with 0 to 119 and inside there we'll be storing the integer values here which represent the status of our board. Oops. Okay, so what else do we need? Well we're actually going to use already our definition of our unsigned 64-bit integer here and we're going to call this pawns and we're going to make an array of these and there are going to be three of them because these will be represented by a colour white, black and both and the reason for this is we're actually going to represent for, with one bit for each square on the 64 squares of the board a bit will be set to a 1 if there is a pawn of the corresponding colour on that square and it'll be zero if there isn't a pawn of a corresponding colour. So if you imagine we had here five, six, seven, eight bits here representing square A1 here to square H1 here at the end and we ended up with a pawn on B1 that would be set to a 1 in our 64-bit number and you simply have to see in our 64-bit number as in a lot as the uh, the various ranks being all in one long line and where there's a pawn a bit is set to one and if there isn't then a bit is set to zero and we have one number at the index zero for the white pawns one at the index one for the black pawns and for all pawns together at the index of two in this array and the reason I'm doing this because we've already got the pawns represented inside this pieces array here is that when we come to evaluate our position when we're actually searching and playing a chess game it'll make it a little bit easier to decide which files and ranks are free or occupied by pawns and it'll also make the evaluation of things like passed and doubled pawns a little bit easier and a little bit quicker and certainly easier for me anyway to visualize so these will be used a little bit later in the development of the engine. So what else do we need? Well we need also, I know from previous experience, it's good to hold in a variable the square that the kings are on for white and black. So we'll hold that in something called king square. We'll hold the current side to move. We'll hold the on square if there is one active, if not that'll be set to the constant of no square probably later on. We'll store the 50 move, I call that 50 move so it's a bit clearer. We'll store the 50 move counter, remember when that hits 50 then the game is drawn or in our case it'll be 100 because we're using half moves not full moves. We're going to store the ply the current search, so how many half moves are into the current search. And we're also going to store something called hist play, which is in the total game so far, how many half moves have been made, because we'll need that for looking back and determining repetitions when we come to storing our history. We'll come to that a little bit later. And the other thing we're going to store in our structure is another unsigned 64-bit integer and this is going to be called the position, so pos key. 
and this will be a unique key which is just generated for each position. I'm just having a quick double check in my notes here that I've got everything required so far for the board structure. I think I have oh, a couple of other things we'll need. The next thing we're going to do is define an array and in this array we're going to store the number of pieces that we have on the board and we're going to index this by piece type. Now you remember that we start off with empty as a zero and we go up to uh, an index of 12 because the black king has a value of 12 so we need 13 positions inside this array and we'll be able to access that later on to say if we want to know how many white knights are on the board then 0, 1, 2 would simply say get the value of piece num at an array index of 2. Likewise we're going to store by colour the number of big pieces so in my understanding for for me big pieces are anything that isn't a pawn and we're also I'm just going to copy and paste this store the number of major pieces which will be rooks and queens and the number of minor pieces which are bishops and knights and these all have three because we're going to have those for white for black and also for both so this will be used when we're evaluating the position for things maybe like drawn end games or something like that so if there are no pawns left on the board then depending on the combination of material on the board or whether there are any major pieces left or not then the game can be drawn and you don't need you can save time in evaluating your position okay so that's it for the basic structure of how our board is going to be represented I'll just save this now and I'll go back to the console quickly here and just run make to make sure things compile and they do of course the program doesn't actually do anything yet because in vice.c we've simply got the simple main function but we've already some way to defining how our board structure is going to look in the next video we'll have a look at how we're going to actually store the history of the game as it's been played so far so we can undo moves if necessary and also detect the three fold position repetition in the position thanks very much for taking the time to listen Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.